So what we have here is an example of medium-sized fire ant colony, right adjacent, interestingly enough, to a native species. Fire ants can be a nuisance, and their stings can be painful. Just mention the name, and many folks will reply, how do we get rid of them? University of Central Florida entomologist Joshua King says, not so fast. Fire ants have a lot to teach us, uh, as do these, these ecosystems. With support from the National Science Foundation, King and biologist Walter Chinkle from Florida State University study the ants as an invasive species and also their social structure. This colony was planted about a week ago, and there they are, doing well. King and Chinkle are what they call ant gardening in the Apalachicola National Forest. In this experiment, we have created different kinds of environmental uh, conditions. We have uh, shading and we have tilling the soil, so it's a disturbance. It allows us to come in and keep track of who survives, who doesn't. Invasive fire ants thrive in disturbed areas, land that's been plowed for farms or cleared for roads and development. There's really quite a bit of growing evidence that land use change is one of the, if not the, underlying reason for this increase in exotics. For decades, efforts to eradicate fire ants on farms and ranches did nothing but move them around. Chemical control of fire ants, it's expensive, it's usually inefficient. The fire ant was one of the species that sort of changed our view about how we can deal with insect pests. And it shifted our view from eradication to management. King says simple changes, like eliminating central soil depots for road projects, can limit the spread of fire ants. King's team in Orlando studies ant and termite colony development. This complex social structure yields amazing ecological results. So when we talk about termites and ants, we're talking about some of the most abundant organisms on Earth, breathtakingly abundant. And that, he says, is worth paying attention to. For Science Nation, I'm Miles O'Brien.